In 2004, Lyndhurst Primary School in Oldham started a sports captain program based on a similar scheme in which they took part with a local high school. 15 year six pupils here are sports captains, coaching younger pupils in games and helping staff with the organisational side. The role of the captains at Lindos Primary School, it goes from collecting kits to giving out letters and consent notes, collecting the consent notes after, um, doing the dinner time sports. To actually taking the lessons after school. Um, when we say taking the lessons after school, they do a lot of the refing and the warm-ups for us. Yeah. And they organise, they let the children know when they're playing, when they're not. Every single lunchtime, even if it's raining, they'll be out there leading the sports. They've made their own rota for dinner times where five of them lead the activities and they do volleyball, football and skipping. They get all the equipment out, they organise the kids, lead and even referee the games and after that they return all the equipment after lunch. Brent and Josh can get a band on. You're all better than me. I wish I could say that was true. We believe um, very much in educating the whole child. We believe in healthy bodies as well as healthy minds. And I think it's, uh, it's fair to say that children certainly don't get as much exercise now in uh, the modern age of technology than uh, did I think when, uh, you know, when they were a lot more active and playing out. We expect the children to be able to transfer their achievements in this project into other, other areas of their learning, both inside and outside of school. Um, one of the main areas is for children to be able to take responsibility for themselves, for their learning and for their conduct. <laughs> to be able to, to learn how to win, how to lose, um, and how to fail successfully, and also how to succeed and use their experiences in this to help them as they develop. There's a big push for sports at Lindhurst because we like, we like it so much. We love watching the children actually play it, take part in the tournaments and winning or not, it's, it's so, so lovely watching them. And I think that every child in the school is given the chance to do the sport, whatever disability they have, yeah. where, whatever their background is, every child is given a chance. The amount of self-value and self-esteem that sport is boosting this school is incredible, isn't it? We're going to jog slowly, slowly to the cones at the top and back. Go. But when we blow the whistle, you touch the floor. So set off. Just see if you can remember that you've got no earrings in and check your shoelaces. Yeah. Right. And before we're going to play any matches or get any tags on, you've got to be careful because of the snow and the ice. Although they mentor and manage the sports captains, organise sporting events and take after school games, Karen and Donna aren't actually teachers. Karen is a learning mentor and Donna is a special needs support assistant. Along with other classroom support assistants from the school, they do it simply because they love it. The thing that makes sport such a success at Lindhurst is the commitment by the team of people. You're going to go under your partner's legs and run round that way until you get to your partner. When you get back, you're going to jump back on the... Do you all understand? Yeah! You got any questions? No! Without Karen, Donna, 
Jen and the others, our school would not have achieved active mark gold. It wouldn't even have achieved active mark because they play such a crucial role. Karen is the driving force behind all this. She motivates the staff, the children, and she is what it's all about, really. Harry, that was your ball! It's actually incredible the amount of responsibility the sports captains take. Um, not only are these children teaching younger children and playing a great role model, but they're also organising equipment, consent letters, and basically they're doing my job for me, or certainly being a right hand. But it also takes um, the pressure off me when I'm working with the special needs children. I can't do the refing and work with the special needs and encourage them at the same time. So while they're refing, I can work with my children and give them all the attention they need. Basically, it's like having an extra 15 sports teachers in there with you. They are that good. What it means to be a sports captain to me is you, you get, get to help. help other children that aren't as good as you at football. It's like a privilege, isn't it? Because I like seeing the kids' faces when they're doing sports. And You've got the added bonus bonuses of like making other people happy and you just feel special. You set a good example to other kids. As soon as we come out, we just come pegging it up to us. Like they look up to you and it as a role model, it makes you really feel proud. It stops bullying. If they've got um, differences yeah, either in their appearances or if they've got medical problems or something and other people won't play with them. And they just sat there like looking upset while I was going and asking if they want to play or if they want to do anything else. And since this activity's been coming in, um, they've all they've started joining in in games and not feeling left out and made friends. A lot of people in the school want this badge, so I feel privileged to have one. The qualities we look for in our sports captains when we choose them is we do choose them very carefully. Really, we do have to have children that love sport and are very enthusiastic at sport. Um, but also, we're looking for children who are responsible, um, who we know will play a really good role model later on. And also, children who we feel have quite strong characters who can cope with children who may be a little bit difficult. And good at sport. Really, it's quite important to be good at sport. Um, because again, the children are watching them, so if they've got the skills for the sports, the children are copying them and they're going to be good teachers to them. I think all the children aspire to be sport captains because they've seen the, the year before, they've seen the older children a year or two years before, what they get, the privileges they get, the fun they have and the responsibility they get. And you can see them, we can see them now in year five, they can't wait to be it. I wish I was a sports captain. I wish I was a sports captain. I wish I was a sports captain. I wish I was Mrs Seth's daughter and a sports captain. We don't make it easy for um, the children to become captains. They've got to be excellent in class um, and they've got to bring the homework in completed and on time. So if it's late, you can guarantee that we will get to know about it by the teacher and it has a knock-on effect, really. Yeah. They've got to keep the standard of work up at all times and also at the way they walk around the school, the respect for other members of staff and children yeah. in the school have to be of a high standard to keep the badge, basically. You know, they don't step out of line, they don't want to step out of line because the last thing they want is the badge taken off them and it, it will be done and it can yeah. be done. and it has been. And it has been, yeah. <laughs> We're going to pass the ball around like this. This afternoon, the sports captains are being assessed by Anna and Paul from Oldham Sports Development. The children are taking part in an eight-week pilot scheme for the British Sports Trust and at the end of training, they'll receive a Young Sports Leader Award. Training comprises a weekly theory session covering topics such as health and safety and a practical where they learn skills such as body language and leadership. What about the use of space and equipment? Stack them in the middle so, you can, so they can all... Yep. Well, today we've come along to assess the children that have been taking part in the course. They've had six to eight weeks training so far and within that time they've been able to actually get the leadership qualities and what they are and how to deliver the sessions and now it's time for us actually to assess the children delivering the sessions to the younger group. First of all we're going to play a game called Dog's Tales. I'm sure you've all played it before. Tied your shoelaces. Right, so you've got some bibs in the back of your pants there, yeah, which I'll get in a minute. They're already over there. <laughs> you don't have to look. Right, <laughs> so you're going to put them in your pants down there, make sure you can see them, and then you're going to run up, find a space, except for two people who I'm going to choose to be on. Yeah, then, then people who are on are going to go in, and if they get the tag on your pants, they're going to put it in their pants, 
and the person who got the bib took off them is going to be on. Can you all understand? Yeah. Any questions? Would you like to get a bib and find a space? I think just on the game, both of you need to make sure you know, like you're encouraging them, the group yeah. all the way through it, rather than just standing to the side, try and get involved a bit more when they're actually carrying out their activity. But other than that, you had all your equipment ready. That's both of you. You got it ready, which was good. Good clear communication. I put you started off a bit quiet. I think you were just a bit nervous well, at the start. as well. Became louder. But you became I've louder got. and you had a good use of whistles. So once you actually got into it, you, you did use your voice well. You introduced yourself as well. Yeah. You, you did your safety well. checks. Which was good. Um, you had them sat down when you were explaining your rules all lined up. Set your boundaries well, positioned everything safely. And you, you two worked well together as a team. Yeah. Led each other in like a nice double act. The sport captains have a massive effect on the children all around. Um, the main one really is at playtime and dinner times. You can guarantee it's, it stops the bullying, it stops anyone being on their own and wandering around the playground on their own. And everybody is joining in and having fun, which is massive. I think certainly at dinner times, it's it's like having an extra 15 dinner ladies out there, um, because obviously m m no children get left out. All the children are involved, aren't they? Yeah. So it just Small eliminates number. the amount of problems that we used to have at this school at dinner times. I would say now that we've probably knocked it right down, haven't we? Yes. Get the odd one or two. We're yeah. not saying there's nothing, but compared to what it was, it was every dinner yeah. we were sorting. We're not joking. Every dinner a problem each with yes. one of the children we. Were work with and now it's very rare. I think the advice that we'd give to other schools if they were thinking of working with sport captains is it's not just the teaching staff that can get involved, the non-teaching staff are more than willing, just like us, to have a go and try out and go on courses to learn the skills and then the captains, Don't all the small this. things that they do, which we've not got the time, we've got full timetables mm. you know, between us, all the things like the collecting the kits, collecting the letters, Go and get in the hockey sticks out, whatever sport it may be. We've not got the time to keep doing that with the staff meetings and everything else. Yeah, and I think really you set your own standards in your own school. You know what your own school needs and you just set your standards there. Yeah. And basically you learn by your own mistakes, don't you? And, you know, with the children, they're so willing to learn. And I would say that we honestly couldn't do this without no. the, the sports captains now. Yeah. 